Welcome into his brain. Welcome into his frequency. Enter at your own risk. Come be at peace with me. Ask the call where we rise and don't fall. Welcome back to another episode of Baxter's Buzz. I am your host, Baxter E. Hall. Welcome to my brain. Welcome to my frequency. Enter at your own risk. Today, I have a wonderful, wonderful guest with me. Um, she is uh, the executive director of the Southfield Area Chamber of Commerce, Jasmine Patton. Hello, Jasmine. Welcome to Baxter's Buzz. Hi, welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Um, you are typically the one welcoming everyone um, <laughs> inside of the, the chamber and the, the different events. Um, for folks that may not know, I am a, a board member of the chamber. I work very closely with Jasmine between the events committee and uh, the things I do with, as an ambassador and um I just want to say that you are doing an amazing job and it's been a pleasure to work with you. Thank you. I appreciate that. We appreciate yeah. you for being a board member too. Thank you. Thank you. So um, for, for folks that aren't aware, I have just uh, written my first book. Uh, the title is, thank you. The title is um, Angelic Eights. It's a letter to Zara. It's a, it's a letter to my daughter um, covering a number of, lessons, things that I, I, you know, hope that she will remember and hold on to. And I also think there's some universal lessons that folks will be able to take from. Um, and as I, when I talked, when I thought about who I wanted to pull in to uh, talk about some of the topics on here, I couldn't think of a better person to talk about um, chapter three, which is your network is your net worth, right? And um, it's something that I have, it's taken me a long time to really understand and grasp. Um, as I mentioned, the, the chamber piece, and you know, it's all about networking and, and trying to help one another. And what better person to talk to, you know, about the power of, of the network than yourself <laughs> being in your executive director role? Yeah, I definitely um, believe in the power of your network. And it took a while to really understand the accumulation, how that is a big part. Um, sometimes I think, especially being younger, you think if I could just get in the right room or stand next to the right person, but um, it's really a small world when you talk about networking, particularly in the Detroit metro area. I feel like it gets smaller and smaller. Um, so it's just really important to build it out and I am, I won't say necessarily an expert in all things networking, but I definitely pride myself on serving my network for sure. Yeah. Um, and, and, and such Jasmine um, style when I, when I asked you to, to be a part of this conversation and, and let's just talk a bit about it. You said, you know, I would really like to talk about the importance of serving um, because you, you're, you know, you're very much giving and trying to put people in the right place and mm -hmm. not as much for yourself. Right. But, but talk about that um, service first sort of attitude and sort of where it comes from. The whole intention of the chamber is to really create connections and to really make sure that we are putting people in a position to strengthen their own networks and um, with the hopes that it leads to commerce and really having a deepening in those relationships. So um, really for me, there's no better way to do that than to really listen and to hear from people what their needs are a lot of times it may be unsaid needs that you may um, and intuitively listening and replaying back what you think they're saying, you pick up gems along the way and gathering those gems while I'm having conversations with business leaders and chamber members, um, I'm able to connect the dots. I've been really blessed to know very early on that connecting the dots and the quality of people and the human resource capital um, that I have access to from having parents who have old school values and really who you know and how you connect and being able to barter was really important. And then bringing that into the experience that I've had working in corporate and now at the chamber, just realizing that a lot of those principles are the same. 
Um, and being able to just show up and serve and asking questions and listening and really just connecting the dots to resources is something that I pride myself on. Yeah, I, I think when you go about it the right way and you're thinking about what other, how you can help other folks, you know, those things tend to um, come back, you know, 10, 20 fold. Um, another part of the book is I'm talking about, it's the, the chapter prior, it's talking about planting good seeds, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, we don't always know where those are going to come back and how, how you know, th- what type of fruit it's going to bear. But we know that if we continue to do right, we plant good seeds. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you, we know that it is cool, it's going to come back. Um, and, and hopefully we can inspire others to do the same because, let's be honest, a lot of folks are putting their needs in themselves up front and it, those aren't the people that you want to help, right? You're not as, you're not as apt to go out out of your way for those folks, right? Well, I think it's important to say what you need. And I think, you know, putting it out there and being direct about what those needs are, it really does help like me connect the dots to to get the resources or when I'm in other conversations or when I'm listening to um, discussions in you know the midst of zoom calls or in-person meetings um, you know if you kind of keep it to yourself I think that that you know defeats the purpose um, we're all really wanting that connection in terms of, you know, resources, in terms of expertise, in terms of professional development. I mean, I think COVID really showed a, a great example of not doing life on your own and what happens when you're in isolation. And for a lot of these small businesses, their bread and butter was really the relationships and the connections they had um, with their customers. and moving from that transitioning to things like, you know, email lists and digital connection points, it was hard. It's an adjustment, um, but it's also the future. So being able to work on your skill sets in person and really building out how you're able to connect with people and your listening skills and communication skills, but also having the intent to give back and to serve, combining that with digital, that's really, you know, my personal pillars and how I'm able to move forward, not only in my role, but it really helps in my personal life too, um, when I'm looking at building relationships with those that are in my inner circle. Yeah, so I, so let me clarify, you have to be clear, and I'm learning that still, like be clear with your ask, right, and what you yes. need, but there need there needs to be time for you to find out what other people need as well and 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 some folks get it and some folks are so me oriented mm. and self centered those are the people that that we don't that I don't want to help uh at, you know as easily but again once you get to that point and you want to find out how you can truly help someone yes please be clear let me know how how, how I can help you. We were talking about um, a chamber member before we um, started to record. And mm-hmm. uh, this person was had, had, is looking for some uh, jobs and or starting to do some interviewing. And I just threw a couple of companies out there and said, hey, look on their sites. If it's something that you see, um, let me know and I can make some introductions just because I know I know some some of the folks there. Sure. I mean, that is such a good feeling for me just to be able to to lend a, a hand, right? And especially someone again who I had a really good conversation with, who I connected with. And mm-hmm. then it was like, okay, let me see how how I can bridge, be that bridge for you to get to where, wherever you're trying to go. Yeah. Um I- you, you talked about the the virtual space and yeah in, in covid uh talk about how the chamber has pivoted in this virtual environment and also um some of the things that that the chamber has going on now that we're doing more in person um stuff as well so people can kind of know 
Sure. So, I mean, the chamber is no different than a lot of the other business models. Um, we really had to pivot to cater to the folks that we serve in terms of brick and mortar, um, a lot of service professionals who are reformatting um, and just redesigning websites and trying to figure out a better way to connect, you know, with their audience and their clients and their customers. Um, and really just looking at ways that we can now serve two types of members. Um, those that prefer, you know, in person, they will always prefer in person. They love the interaction and being in person with other people in, a, in the same space. And those that really see the value and convenience of being online. And I think regardless of the numbers when it comes to COVID, um, we'll always serve those two. And it's on a scale. Um, and just identifying that that's okay. Um, and that we're able to switch that on and off. Um, there are some, you know, programs that it makes more sense for us to do a virtual um, professional development for an hour during lunch, where you have a bag lunch and it's more of a lunch and learn um, experience where you can hop on a call from your desk and be able to gain, you know, insight resources um, and hear from a speaker. Um, versus, you know, our mixers and our networking. Yes, we were able to do some of those things virtually, but it's just a different feel when you're in person and when you're able to, um, you know, just have a good time. And that's the whole intent. There's no agenda, you know, there's no speaker per se, um, and it's just more laid back. So we are doing uh, professional development, online, our Chamber 201s for our members. We're niching down um, in terms of specific topics like social media marketing um, that we are offering for our members. We are also doing things like Wake Up to Southfield, which is a new uh, design to a previous program that we have here, but we have a new partnership with Centropolis Accelerator at Lawrence Tech and the Oakland County Business Forward Program. And we are doing a morning mixer uh, where we're networking every morning, every month, I'm sorry, every month, once in the morning, we are doing a wake up to Southfield. Um, and all of this information is available on our website um, at www.southfieldchamber.com under events. But uh, we just completed State of the City, which is our uh, mayor address. We had a great turnout um, for that event. It's one of our larger events. We're also looking forward to our member breakfast that's coming up in May and our golf outing that's coming up in August. So there's a lot happening. We have some mixers, as you know, we're planning some happy hours that are coming up um, next month in the upcoming months. And there's just so much that we want to, and that's one of the things that I really love about the chamber, um, to be able to have a touch point and so many different types of events with so many different types of people. And even from my perspective on how I serve and how I'm able to help, um, like you said in your example, I can create the introduction and provide an opportunity based on what I know um, and wish them well. And, you know, circle back to find out if there's additional ways that I can be of support, but really seeing people take the ownership and building their own relationships is something that I personally um, get joy out of. And just seeing people have a good time. I think that that's good business, you know, being able to bring people together, meet those objectives and still, you know, have the end result, which is, you know, creating commerce. You know, a couple of things that I want to cover uh, before we wrap. First, you know, there's something to be said about just making a, a, a connection, right? Just um, there's a book that I just read. Um, it may be called Blue Fishing. It'll come to me. But uh, he, he talks about the, the uh, chug test. And he talks about um, if you don't want to chug a beer with this person, you know, you don't don't do business with them. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, so you know, everyone doesn't drink, right? But at the same token, I think the the 
the theme is, or the, what he's really trying to say is if you don't feel great about, this, if you wouldn't want to spend time with this person, don't do business with them. And mm-hmm. a- although I don't agree with, with that completely, I do think that there's people that hit it off right, right away and that you do want to do, bit, you know, that you're more likely to do business with be- because of that. Um, and I think that a lot of those connections are made in these very, in these, these uh, networking opportunities, whether it's an official networking event or whether it's an unofficial, you know, sort of just gathering where people sure. start to connect. But the question that I have for you, and 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 because uh, I have gotten in trouble by some of my close friends, okay, um, because because I because I don't I don't understand this the balance yet apparently. But I want to ask you as a connector. Uh huh. How do you know when to stay involved or stay connected? Like, let's say you make an introduction. How do you know whether you should stay involved in that connection and when you should just get out the way? It's I'm, <laughs> it's a delicate balance. Um, and sometimes it's it's a combination of things. It's, you know, the initial connection and then giving them an opportunity to on their own, you know, build a rapport, build a relationship. Um, But then there may be a circle round that's an additional ask, you know, can you, you know, ask this person for me, can you connect me to someone else and they want you to um, be by their side, you know, through the entire process up until the objective. And um, there are times that I have been a part of a process longer than I expected. Um, And that's one thing about the whole like, and even using the term serve, I believe in, you know, servant leadership. I don't necessarily have to like you to help you, right, build a connection. Like I put that part out of the window and being a uh, former people pleaser, it is difficult sometimes to balance that line and really understanding when, you know, you have to let go and hope and wish well. And um, I think that I can think of so many examples on either end, but I think the main takeaway is asking, is there something else? And that's the thing when you are in a member centered organization, I, it's member driven. The members come first. If I have a two way, you know, conversation with them, hey, how did that meeting go? Um, you know, is there anything else that you think that you need? You know, in a connection and being honest about my capacity and how I can assist. Um, and sometimes it is just giving a suggestion of maybe a different, you know, play on how they could move forward or giving resources for them to, you know, reach out to someone who has greater expertise in a particular area. So I think just understanding that not every person that you make a connection with or that you make a connection for, are you supposed to be a part of the entire process? And I really look at the larger scale of being able to serve and assist at the chamber. I'm not physically able to do what I want, even if it's something that I feel that I should um, go the distance in creating the connections and being a part of all the events and meeting and greeting all the folks that I am in this role. So I just think it's important to recognize sometimes on your own and being self-reflective when you're a little too involved and really just having a two-way conversation with the folks that you're trying to assist. Yeah, I get in trouble. Uh, well, I've gotten um, fussed at, like I said, by some of my close friends for for being too disconnected, like making the intro and then being like, all right, you guys take it from here mm. where um, it was like, well, this person could have taken advantage or they could have, there may have been an opportunity for you to benefit in some, in some way. And you just, you kind of, you you gave them the opportunity to sort of cut themselves out, mm. and I just just like you, I don't have the time to babysit relationships. I love when I'm able to put people together, and then, and then you know people are like, "Thank you so much, that worked out. We really hit it off." Um, it, it doesn't always work that way, but it's like it's up to you. Like in my brain, it works, 
hopefully there's some synergy there and you can help one another. And if not, my bad, but just know that the intentions were right. But I, I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I don't want to insert myself inside of that. Um, it's a bit it's I mean it's definitely a balance but I think too with our role especially at the chamber like we're um, charged with giving the tools on helping you to have a better connection you know so sometimes it's not necessarily something that I do or I say but some tools that may be available to you to help you and building you know what you're looking to um, do and making these connections I think the other piece too and and just keeping mind that there is a huge community inside of the chamber of experts and knowledgeable, seasoned, young. I mean, we have a melting pot really of the different types of people that you can connect with at the chamber. And I learn a little bit from everyone. And that to me is the most important thing. There's, there's multiple ways that you can connect and make a deal and build relationships. And I think that's the beauty of the art of really creating the connection and being able to serve so many di different types of people. Um, so yeah, it's something that I enjoy, but I will be remiss in saying that, you know, I have mentors I have other, you know, chamber leaders that I speak with and we're constantly talking about this balancing act. I have others that are in corporate arenas that are, um, their style is servant leadership and it's an ongoing discussion, even how you show up at home or how you show up, you know, after the nine to five and cutting that line and creating those boundaries. Um, it's ever evolving. So I think it's just important to understand that, you know, your network, your net worth, they're all important. And so are your boundaries and the way that you decide to serve or your style, even if it's different and how you're able to assist in creating those connections. The most important thing for me is just the willingness to do so and to be open in the process. Yeah, yeah, that openness to say, you know, how can I help? Is there value that I can add? Um, yeah, and maybe there's value that, that someone can add for you, um, to you and your situation, but that openness, you really have to start start with that because you could you'd be surprised right you'd be surprised kind of where where people connect and sort of where they end up and how they're they've evolved and how their relationships have evolved because because of that but if they were never if they were were never open to connecting in the first place right there may have been some opportunities missed um i just want to say thank you for your first uh, visit to Baxter's Buzz. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I know that you'll be back. I'm, I'm making my my pitch right now. Um, also, thank you for helping me um, go in detail about a, a very important topic uh, of the book. Right? I mean, it, there's yeah. there's there's um, you know these are things that I want my daughter to understand the importance of the importance of networking, the importance of community and sort of giving back and the, like I said, planting those, those good seeds. So I hope that everyone um, can find some value in it when they uh, check out the book. Again, it's called uh, Angelic Eights, a letter to Zara. Um, on behalf of Jasmine, um, I am Baxter E. Hall and I want, you ought to know that you are capable. You just need to embrace your own frequency. So until next time, um, I'll see you guys soon. Peace. Welcome into his brain. Welcome into his frequency. Enter at your own risk. Come be at peace with me. Thank you so much for watching uh, this video. If you haven't already, please hit the like button. Please subscribe, share, and also hit that notification button as well. Thank you so much.